Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of this all new series, Hajj in Perspective. In the previous episode, we talked about Hajj as a training program and about the kind of attitude that you need to have in the face of some of the difficulties that you might find in your Hajj in order to get the ultimate reward, the paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for those people whose Hajj is an accepted one. And we mentioned how the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ indicate how difficult the Hajj is and indicate some of the challenges that people will have to overcome, the challenge of controlling the tongue, the challenge of controlling the limbs, and the challenge of course of dedicating the heart and the mind to this huge act of worship that is such an immense act of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only obligated it upon the Muslims once in a person's lifetime. That's because it's such a huge effort that is required that the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it such that you only need to do it once and that everything you do after that is voluntary and optional. In this episode today, we're going to continue the theme of the right attitude and we're going to talk about two essentials that have to be there for every deed to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, if these two essential things are not present in your hajj, are not present in your prayer, are not present in your dua, are not present in the sacrifice that is made, are not present in the charity that you give, then none of these things will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the two essentials for every single good deed. And so before we talk about the practicalities of the Hajj, the lessons of the Hajj, uh, putting Hajj into perspective, we really need to talk about the two essential things that no good deed is complete, and no good deed is accepted by Allah without having them. The first of them is sincerity for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-ikhlas, that all of your deeds, that everything that you do on your hajj, and hajj is full of good deeds, from the prayer that you do, from the tawaf that you do, from the dua that you do, from the standing in Arafah that you do, from the moving from Arafah to Muzdalifah, and from Muzdalifah to Mina, the stoning of the Jamarat, that every single action that you do is sincere sincerely and only for Allah alone. And this is something that is specifically mentioned in the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with regard to the Hajj. And that is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would stand if he was performing either the Hajj or the Umrah and he would say, Oh Allah, this is a pilgrimage in which there is no riya and there is no sum'ah. Riya is doing something for somebody to see you. And Sum'ah is doing something for someone to hear about it. So there is no showing off and there is no building a reputation among the people when it comes to the Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in a hadith Qudus that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated from him. I am the least in need of anyone being made a partner with me. Whoever does an action in which he associates someone else in that action with me, I abandon him and I abandon his action. So let's apply this to the Hajj, that if you were to do an action in your Hajj or you were to do your Hajj and you were to give somebody a share of your Hajj, either because you want people to see you and you know how common is it, I don't know where you're watching or about where you're watching, but in the UK it's real common for people to be said about them, this person's a Hajji, you know, he's gone to Hajj and he gets, the, he gets called Al-Hajj or he gets called Hajji among the people and he, you know, it's almost like people sometimes announce themselves going on the Hajj among all their family and there's that danger of it becoming uh, a show for the sake of others. Whoever makes somebody else a partner with Allah in their action, Allah abandons them and abandons their action. If Allah abandons you, you will not be able to complete your Hajj successfully. 
if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abandons your action, it will not be accepted by him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal told us in the Quran, and I think many of you at home will have memorized Surah al bayyinah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ وَيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ قَيِّمًا They have not been commanded to do anything. Allah has not asked anything from you except that you make the religion only for Him. To worship Allah, making the religion only for Him as pure monotheists and for you to perform the prayer and to give the zakah and this is the upright religion. So it's really important that we avoid these two deadly destructive sins that wipe out our hajj, arriya wa sum'a, showing off, doing things so people can see you. You know, you remember people standing on Arafah and then somebody moves, you know, in front of everyone else. Let me, the people see me so that people can see how I'm crying and how I'm upset and how I'm coming near to Allah. This destroys your deeds. And likewise, the issue of sum'a, of being heard, of people building a reputation for yourself. This person's a haji, this person is this, this person's more pious than others. Make your hajj only for Allah. Now that doesn't mean that you can't tell people about your hajj. There's nothing wrong with telling people. And in fact, you're going to need to tell people for many things. And many uh, people will want to speak to you before you go on your hajj. There's no problem with that. But keep on fighting with yourself. That when you do something, you do it for Allah. You don't do it so that people hear. When you are carrying out an action, you do so to, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that is what is going to get you the accepted hajj. So the first condition is that your actions, whatever they may be in the hajj, are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and nobody else gets a share in any of them. Of course, the most extreme example of giving a share is that you intend uh, a God besides Allah that you intend to seek the help of a God besides Allah, or that you seek the help of an intermediary between you and Allah during the Hajj. This is of course the most extreme example. But like we said, there are much more subtle examples showing off in front of people, building up a reputation. Make sure that what you do, you do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. If people hear about it, there's no problem with that. If people see you doing it, there's no problem with that. But your intention, and your focus is what is with Allah and not what is with the people. The second condition with which or without which no deed would be accepted by Allah is what we call al mutaba That this action is only or is only done in accordance with the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we have the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha in Sahih al-Bukhari and muslim And indeed the wording of al-imam Muslim in this man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fa huwa rad. Whoever does an action that is not in accordance with the affair of the Messenger of Allah, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, it will be rejected from them. So if you want to have your deeds accepted, not only must they be for Allah Azza wa Jal, but they must be in accordance with the Sunnah of His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam. And many people may succeed in the first and fail in the second. And so when it comes to it being for Allah, they say, my intention is good, my heart is pure, I'm doing it only for Allah. But you see them doing things in their hajj that go against the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And some of the books of hadith narrate a story of one of the companions. He sacrificed his slaughter on the day of Eid al-Adha, his udhiyah, his sacrifice before the, uh, the Eid prayer. And he did so, so that he could feed the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so that he could uh, have the food prepared and ready to give to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and so that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't have to wait in order for this uh, food to be prepared. 
And when the Prophet ﷺ came to him and it was clear that he sacrificed his animal before the prayer in opposition to the Sunnah of the Messenger ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Shatuka shatu laham. This meat that you have given me, this sheep you have given me is just meat. There's no reward in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. So it's very important that we not only focus on our Hajj being for Allah, but we focus on our Hajj being in accordance with the Sunnah of His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And how many people, as we said, succeed in the first and fail in the second. Of course, to succeed in the second, you need to have the knowledge of what the Sunnah is. You need to get online to, to get those books, that beneficial, uh, those beneficial reminders, so that you can understand how to perform the Hajj in accordance with the Sunnah. Knowing that if you were to oppose the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in those things in which there is no flexibility, then this would be a reason for the deeds not to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In conclusion, we find in the ayah of Surah Al-Kahf, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Whoever wishes to meet with his Lord, let him do good deeds, deeds in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and let him not make a partner in anything with his Lord. So this is the most important thing for your deeds to be accepted and it's the most important thing for your Hajj to be accepted. So we need to bear that in mind before everything and anything else. That's all we have time for in this episode. Until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make your Hajj accepted and to make it easy for you. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.